Welcome to worship. I wonder how you feel today. Are you excited? Full of joy? Feeling sleepy or tired? Maybe you're full of cares and concerns. The struggles of this time. Whoever you are and whatever you bring, know that you come to the God of love who welcomes you, who draws close as we seek to draw close to God. I invite you for a moment to pause and think of something for which you are grateful this day. It may be something very simple or it may be something deep and profound. Hold for a moment that for which you wish to give thanks that for which you are grateful. And as you remember that thing, allow that to turn to praise and thanks, to acknowledge God who is the source of all, the one who is faithful and just. Gracious God, we come before you as we are, yet with thankful hearts, for you are faithful, you are our rock in times of trouble. We bless you.
Let's pray. Gracious God, you are faithful. You are our rock in times of trouble, whether that be the troubles that we face at this time or whether that be our inner troubles in our lives or in life before. We give you thanks and praise that you are there for us. That you never abandon us. In fact, you entered into our life so fully that we might know more of your love and your life that you offer to us. We thank you. We praise you. We honour you for your goodness. And we pray that you might enable us to know you more this day. To know your blessings. And to come before you with thanks and praise. And as we share in worship, wherever we are, may we know by the power of your spirit that you are with us. For this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. A reading from Psalm 66. Bless our God, O peoples, that the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You have brought us into the net. You have laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out into a spacious place. I will come to your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Let's come to God now in a time of confession, remembering the ways in which we have fallen short of what God asks of us and of what we ask of ourselves. We come not in shame or self-loathing, but in trust, confident that our God delights to forgive, restore and renew. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far does our God remove our sins from us, receive the forgiveness of the God who loves you, and a new beginning in your walk together. Amen.
reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. How do you feel about keeping commands? I don't know about you, but if I am commanded to do something, or even just sometimes asked, I suddenly lose all enthusiasm. This may be a genetic trait. Living at home again, I've been reminded of the rocky relationship I and my siblings had with music practice growing up. I'm sure laziness, at least on my part, is part of the issue, but the thing that really drove me far away from practice is when my parents asked me to do it. They tried myriad ways, all largely to a similar effect, no practice, often with some form of sarcastic or grumpy retort thrown in. Genetic or not, I like to imagine we all have moments where the feeling we are following a command order or even a polite request really winds us up. That's maybe why, when I read the Gospel today, I sometimes feel just a little bit put out. Commands in the Bible seem to range from asking us to behave in ways that really should just be common decency, to vague and slightly confusing statements, to things that seem so unachievable that it seems quite unfair to suggest that to prove we love Jesus we have to keep them. I could go on further about all of this and about how the disciples might have been a tad frustrated by the idea that they had to prove their love to Jesus at all, but that would be digressing. And I also think that by giving in to these petty frustrations, I am perhaps missing the point. For when first reflecting on this passage for today, Yes, those feelings were there, but they came hand in hand with something I can definitely get behind. A specific idea of what it is to love. Where I might have very human issues with keeping commandments, Jesus is offering a love that transcends my rankling. When I focus on the word love instead of commands, suddenly I do want to keep Jesus' commandments, even when they're vague even when they're difficult. Hold that thought. Reflecting on the word commandments for me originally summoned Old Testament ideas of stone tablets and a list of rules, some of which hopefully I'll never break, and some of which I break in my own small way regularly. Jesus could be referring to these. He could be referring to many of the other guidelines and philosophies he himself has put in place to help his followers on their way. I think he's probably referring to all these things. But I think, maybe, all of these commands are embraced in his new commandment. Introduced for the first time, a stone's throw away from today's reading, in John 13, 34 to 35. A new commandment I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Not satisfied with saying it once, Jesus asks his disciples to love one another three times. And what does Peter say? Lord, where are you going? Talk about changing the topic. Yet, I can't judge Peter. If we return to our passage where Jesus is talking about love again, all I want to do is ask, do I have to? 
It seems it is easy to overlook God's love in favour of picking holes. I wonder if it is often because it seems too simple when nothing about God and life can feel simple. But Jesus wants to give his Father's love its due. He knows us. He knows we sometimes find simplicity harder to grasp than complexity. Which I imagine is why he brings up this commandment again at John 15, 9 to 14. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Now, I'm not saying loving one another is easy. I'm sure the cynic in me would not have to look far to see examples of people seemingly not loving each other. There are enough images going round on Facebook of people breaking social distancing rules over the bank holiday weekend, which I could waft in God's face and say, look, we don't care about each other. There are plenty of angry people on Facebook attempting to say something along those lines. But I choose to turn away from the people breaking the rules and the people making the angry posts. Not in judgment or in despair, and not permanently, but just long enough to re-find God's simple love amidst the confusion. To allow myself to see all the positives as well as the negative. To remind myself that when we choose to love God, we choose to love one another and we choose to love ourselves. For Jesus tells us in chapter 14 verse 20, On that day you will realise that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. The thing I've yet to mention, and that I think ties keeping commands and love and loving together, is Jesus' promise here of the Holy Spirit. He has given us an advocate to help us and be with us and in us forever. We may find following orders arduous. We may find loving ourselves, others, God hard. This is all understandable, especially currently when the orders seem to make little sense, but equally, so does not following them. And love seems so hard when you can't hug or meet up or worship together. But even now, in this circumstance so exceptional, we have a help, so that when we don't feel like loving, the spirit is in us and can support us. And whether we like it or not, we have this help with us forever and at all times. When originally thinking about this sermon, James suggested the poem Love by George Herbert. I was particularly struck by the first line, Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back. It's so tempting currently to willfully draw back from God and from each other. Tempers are short at times, we feel trapped in our own homes, in our own heads. We have been forced to draw back from each other physically. And as a result, I have found myself drawing back from people emotionally. But here's the thing I've realised. We can't socially distance from God. Even when we try really hard to shut him out, to turn away. Even when in doing so, we hurt ourselves and others. We have the spirit of truth in us, gently encouraging us, helping us to obey this command to love. Unfortunately, the Holy Spirit has yet to help me with my relationship with music practice, though I can't say I've exactly asked. I do, however, 
think it can help me appreciate that sometimes when people ask me to do things, it is because they care about me. And when I put aside the fact I don't like being told what to do and focus on the love and care behind the words, I can draw closer to whoever is asking and they to me. The reading today reminds me that when everything is framed by God's love, keeping commands can be as simple as reflecting this love. And that when even this seems hard, we have help. To end, here is Love by George Herbert. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful, ah, oh, my dear, I, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, Who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says Love, who bore the blame? My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says Love, and taste my meat. So, I did sit and eat. Loving and gracious God, we hold before you the prayers of our community. We pray for our chapel, 
and all who worship with us, especially during this time. May we grow as a community of love, service and discipleship, ever willing to respond to your call in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our university and all who work and study here, especially those taking assessments. May we strive to create a community that pursues truth and builds friendship, helping all to achieve their potential and use their gifts to help society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and all who hold positions of leadership. May they be guided by what is right, act in the interests of justice and work for the care of those most in need. We pray for wisdom, clarity and responsibility at this time and hold before you all who work to keep our communities safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and those who care for them. We thank you for the dedication of carers, cleaners, nurses and doctors in their work to care and heal. May we support them in all they do and persist in protecting the systems which allow all who need care to receive it fairly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world and our environment. May we work to break down systems that exploit the poor and damage our environment. We hold before you all those who work for a fairer world and bring a voice to those who are silenced. May your spirit give us a hunger for your justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our hearts to your power, moving around us and between us and within us until your glory is revealed in our love of both friend and enemy, in communities transformed by justice and compassion, and in the healing of all that is broken. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship. Wherever you are, I hope and pray that you might know God's presence and peace at this time. And so may peace be with you. May God's love, which is there for us, call us on. And may we, in return, live out lives filled with love. In commitment to the one who loves us so fully. May you know the blessing of God this day. God who is ever creating, always redeeming and constantly sustaining. May God's blessing be with you and with all the world this day and forevermore. Amen.